Welcome to Thursday. It's February 17th, 2022. Welcome to the Day Weather Podcast brought to you by Chugwater Chili. If you have not ordered your Chugwater Chili yet, do so quickly because you're going to want to make some chili based on the forecast we're going to give you here going forward. Go to ChugwaterChili.com. Try out their green chili seasoning. Go to ChugwaterChili.com. And if you use Chugwater Don at checkout, you get 20% off. The bad weather we had here yesterday is headed east with Arctic weather coming next week. It's going to be chilly and breezy today across the region. Temperatures will still be cold, but the sun will be back out and we'll see improving weather. And that's going to lead to a warmer, windy pattern for the interior west as we get into Friday, Saturday through early Sunday. So not much going on between Friday through early Sunday other than some windy areas. There'll be a few snow showers at times in the mountains, but nothing significant. An Arctic front is going to hit Montana and North Dakota by Sunday morning. This Arctic air will then plunge into Wyoming, South Dakota, Colorado, Nebraska, parts of Kansas and Utah, Idaho, parts of the Pacific Northwest. This Arctic air may spill west of the divide. That's something we haven't seen yet this winter. This could be, folks, the coldest air of the winter so far. So we are concerned about potentially dangerous cold conditions, cold temperatures and cold wind chill that will be stressful on young, weak, and newborn livestock. So anybody that's in calving operations, about ready to start calving or lambing, you gotta be ready for next week because I think next week is certainly gonna be a concern. Not so much because a ton of snow's coming. We are gonna get snow, but we are gonna get really, really cold. Gotta love this picture from Jim Page up in Judith Gaff, Montana. Well, they're all huddled close together and especially up in Judith Gap by this week, by Sunday into Monday, that'll be the case again. But this will be a familiar scene by next week across the High Plains and Rockies. Today's satellite photo shows what we showed you yesterday, that swirl of clouds over the Aleutians. This swirl of clouds right here is going to be the big weather maker next week. Here's yesterday's storm system heading into the Midwest while clearing skies and high pressure is coming in behind it here for a few days. Today's chart shows an elongated area of low pressure and colder air sliding eastward while high pressure remains off the west coast. Now, it doesn't look like much here, does it? You've got this trough back here, but notice the temperatures are really, really at a big contrast level. These colors represent pressure and temperature, and as you go north, you see how they turn to a green and a blue, which basically means this is where the real cold air is. And then up here with the lighter colors is Gulf of Mexico moisture. Gulf of Mexico air is going to be humid. It's going to be a lot warmer. So we got a big collision setting up. We also have a very strong jet stream forming along that temperature gradient. So there's a lot coming together here. And if you've got any designs heading into the Midwest or the Great Lakes or the southeastern United States, Today, tonight, or tomorrow, watch out. First of all, we're going to see a significant snow event in this area right here that will go many, many miles. It's like what happened last week, a narrow band of heavy snow. Then south of the heavy snow, we're going to have a freezing rain and ice event again in this area here. Then the green here is showing the rain, but it's not only rain. Look at the severe weather threat for today. This area right here means a very, very high risk of severe weather with thunderstorms and strong thunderstorm activity right into this area here as that Gulf of Mexico air comes in colliding with that Arctic air. This is a recipe for a bad severe weather outbreak. Now you might be saying we shouldn't have severe weather outbreaks in February. There's no way that should happen in February. Well, when you look at the data, when you take a look at history, you say yes, actually these do happen in February. If you look at the statistical probabilities, of tornado activity on February 17th, well, it certainly shows up as being there. In fact, in the 40% profile right there. So if you look at where the severe weather outbreak is expected today, looking at climate statistics, well, it's not that unusual. So if you hear that it's unusual, it's not. Now, as we take a look longer term, they're setting the stage now to take a look at the long range outlook. We've got this high pressure ridge growing and building up into the Gulf of Alaska. So when the ridge is there, we go in the fridge. This is by Sunday afternoon. Notice the green color up here. We'll just call this green boundary with yellow as basically the boundary of where the Arctic air is going to be. The trajectory of the air, if you follow these little arrows, these wind barbs, 
the trajectory of the air is coming right off the pole, right off the Arctic Circle, and headed into Western Canada, then eventually into the Western United States. This is by noon Sunday. When you take a look at temperatures ahead of the front relative to average, this is where you got to always be careful with these Arctic waves. Because by noon Saturday, we have temperatures in eastern Montana and western North Dakota and northeastern Wyoming that are 10 to 20 degrees above normal. So you're talking about you know, light shirt weather. You don't even need a jacket. You're going to be looking at some really warm temperatures up here. But look what happens. By noon Sunday, you're going from 10 to 20 degrees above average to 10 to 20 degrees below the average going into central Montana, while very warm temperatures, Chinook conditions, out into the plain states ahead of this. So this is where you can get this weather whiplash. We talk all about this La Nina going from a phase one, a warm pattern, to a very rapid change to a phase two, an Arctic pattern. That's exactly what's happening here. So this is by noon Sunday. This is by sundown Sunday. The ribbon of Arctic air, see it getting pushed west of the divide into Idaho, Eastern Oregon and Washington. So this Arctic wave is unlike other Arctic waves that have been mainly staying east of the divide. So it's still going to be warm Sunday out here. By Monday morning, the Arctic air makes a big push and it's all the way down to Denver and along the I-70 corridor, still very warm down here in the Texas Panhandle. But see all these purples? You're talking about some real bonafide cold air and see the greens and blues back here? Even into California, that cold air is gonna spill in. This cold air right here, you're wondering like, why is it not so cold here? Well, the Rockies, the higher ground, backing up that cold air like a dam, but that will change as well as we go forward. By next Tuesday, we have a very large, elongated and large trough from the west coast into the Corn Belt. This is a lot of geography right here. And look at the trajectory of the air again. Follow the barbs coming right out of the Arctic and right into the high plains and Rockies. These are temperatures relative to the 30 year normals by Tuesday morning. By Tuesday morning, we got a blue norther headed to Amarillo, headed to South Texas and headed towards the Gulf Coast. Look at all the purple in Canada, the Northern Rockies. This is a very large Arctic air mass and a lot of it is getting west of the divide. Again, haven't really seen that yet this winter. If we were to look at temperatures relative to 30 year normals, by Tuesday afternoon, Gillette is at 47 degrees below its average. I'll show you what those temperatures convert to when we take a look at what the real air temperature is like. Now, this is a model. The model could very well be overdoing it. Even if it is overdoing it, it's still going to be getting a lot colder. These are temperatures by noon. Now, this is at noon on Tuesday. So we're talking middle part of the day. Temperatures are below zero anywhere you see gray. Then you can see some minus 19, some minus 10s, minus 11s. You got some really cold air up here, but the really cold air is all the way down to Denver. Single digits getting further south into the Southern Plains. Look at these temperatures back here into the Great Basin, getting really, really cold. Then if we go to Wednesday morning, and if we were to look at just the minimum temperatures, possibly minus 20 or colder in this blue area right here, that doesn't include wind chill. Again, this is a model. It may be over forecasting the cold. I think it probably is. But the overriding message here, this is why we're concerned about severe cold being a livestock concern. Now, these are what the possible wind chill values could be looking like by Wednesday morning. Again, take it with a grain of salt. But when you see 30, 40, 50 degree below zero wind chills, you've got a serious situation on your hands. This is the snowfall forecast for the next 10 days. You know, this area in particular, along I-90, I do think this is likely to come to fruition. I have a high confidence level that northern Wyoming into South Dakota, maybe the Pine Ridge of uh, Nebraska, then parts of Montana up here, this could be a real problem area, not only with those Arctic temperatures and wind, but a significant amount of snow. Now, notice there's not as much snow here and that's because the Arctic air may not be able to collide with Pacific moisture here, but it's still going to snow. Then look at the Rockies of Colorado, Wyoming, back into and along the divide here. Mountain snow is going to be pretty good with this change in the weather as well. If you were to look at the big picture, this is by Thursday afternoon into Friday morning. The Arctic air is now down to the Gulf Coast again. And look at all the purple expanding south 
and east again. What's really interesting is if you were to, to be where we are right now a year ago, it was a year ago this week when we had the big Arctic wave and the big problems with power outages and all the problems that happened in Texas and the Southern Plains. It was a year ago this week. So this week has been colder, but nothing like a year ago, but it's only a week difference. It looks like between these Arctic outbreaks, it's pretty interesting. Only a week apart from last year to what's coming next week. Not saying Texas is gonna have the same situation. I don't think they will, but it's a similar outbreak of cold to what happened a year ago. So stay tuned, we'll have more weather for you tomorrow. Have yourself a good Thursday.